Early voting for the March 1st primary started Monday, one race that's drawing voters in both parties, the campaign for governor. New polling shows both Greg Abbott and Beto O'Rourke seem to be on course to face off in November. And as Monica Madden found, the popularity of the president, or lack thereof, could play a big part in deciding this race take a valentine to the polls. <laughs> Events in Travis County Monday showcased the official start of politicians vying for the hearts of voters. We need to get out the vote for Governor Abbott. Governor Abbott's campaign showed no love for Democrats, focusing his attacks squarely on challenger Beto O'Rourke. Open border policies imposed by the Biden administration and supported by Beto O'Rourke himself. Both Abbott and O'Rourke are favored to win their party's primary. New polling from the Texas Politics Project looks ahead to November, showing Abbott with a 10-point lead over O'Rourke. That's a pretty comfortable lead. The governor is working to tie O'Rourke to the president, who polled unfavorably amongst Texans surveyed. I asked O'Rourke about this last Thursday in a one-on-one -on -one interview. It sounds to me like Greg Abbott is desperate and Greg Abbott is scared. We're focused on the people of Texas. The more uh, that I let Texans know what Beto really stands for, candidly, I think the polls should be widening. Assuming voters in their party are feeling the love. The, the matchup is hypothetical, even though both are doing very well in their primary races. Monica Madden, State of Texas. The Texas Politics Project poll showed Beto O'Rourke with 93% support from Democratic primary voters. Governor Abbott does have Republican challengers polling in the double digits. Former Florida Congressman Alan West pulled in 15% of the poll. Former Texas State Senator Don Huffines is right behind with 14% support. The poll shows a tighter race in the Republican campaign for attorney general. Ken Paxton leads closest rival George P. Bush by 26 percentage points, but Paxton's still short of the 50 percent threshold he needs to avoid a runoff. Former Texas Supreme Court Justice Ava Guzman and Congressman Louis Gohmert also show double-digit support. But the most interesting races may not be at the top of your ballot. A few county-level races could help shape the future of Texas politics. Joining us for Insight is Bob Garrett, the Austin Bureau Chief for the Dallas Morning News. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Josh. Sure, anytime. You put the spotlight this week on down-ballot races in some of the state's largest counties, in particular a race for judge in the Houston area. What's going on there? Well, first term county judge Lena Hidalgo, uh, who stunned the world by beating Ed Emmett, a Republican in 2018, is up for re-election. And if you look down the road past Beto O'Rourke, Lena Hidalgo is at the top of any list of who could run for U.S. Senator Governor for the Democrats in Texas in the future. And uh, she's in pretty good shape. It's just she has taken a pledge not to take money from county vendors. So she doesn't have an overwhelming war chest. And uh, some Democrats are nervous they, that she'll get hung up in a runoff on the Democratic side and then face really strong Republican, uh, well-heeled Republican opposition in the fall, perhaps from a guy named Vidal Martinez. All right, well, Harris County, we know, leans blue. But what about Republicans in that race? Uh, there's actually three leading ones, and uh, the one is a, a black woman who heads the Humble ISD school board. One is a, uh, a Army veteran, Hispanic, uh, Harvard-trained lawyer. They, uh, but Vidal Martinez is sort of the establishment candidate. You also wrote about a race this week in Tarrant County where national politics could come uh, out and play a role in the outcome. What's the story there? Well, this is the uh, race for Tarrant County judge. A longtime moderate Republican, Glenn Whitley, is retiring, and former Fort Worth Mayor Betsy Price is running for this, and she's sort of the establishment pro-business Republican. But there is a Trump-endorsed uh, sort of insurgent candidate, Tim O'Hare, who used to be the Farmers Branch mayor and had an ordinance trying to, you know, ban landlords from renting to immigrants. He's also played a role in this big sort of critical race theory controversy in Carroll ISD. You may have heard of the South Lake parents group there. So he is a, a strong contender, and it's a really interesting look at whether this sort of national cleavage in the Republican Party will come to play in Tarrant County. We saw a former state rep, uh, Matt Krause, leave the legislature to run for attorney general, and then right. he dropped out of the race so he could run for Tarrant County DA. How's that going? Well, that is an open seat to a Republican. Sharon Wilson is, is retiring, and 
Matt Krause, you would think, has the right lane to himself, but there's a guy named Phil Sorrells, who's a criminal district court judge, who's uh, gotten a Trump endorsement. He also happens to have a consultant who's Dan Patrick, our lieutenant governor's consultant. And we know Dan Patrick has claimed he's guiding Donald Trump's endorsements in Texas. All right. Well, Bob, I appreciate you keeping a close eye on all this. What would we do without you? Just look down ballot, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Texas is getting two new seats in Congress, but one of them might go to someone who's already serving on Capitol Hill. How a familiar face is setting the pace in this brand new district.